evaluate the double integral over r. And here we're given that r is the region bounded by the square root and the cubic function. So I'm going to get started here by sketching a graph of this region so that we can identify our bounds. So we have our y-axis and the x-axis. And we are familiar with the shapes of these curves. We know that the square root starts at the origin and looks like so. so that's y is equal to the square root of x. And then we have our cubic, our cubic power, which looks something like this. And I've really zoomed in on, on this graph here. This is y is equal to x cubed. So the region r that we want is bounded by these two curves. So I'm shading this in now. This is our region r, our region of integration. And so looking at this, we can see that these two functions are certainly intersecting at the origin, 0, 0. And then we think to ourselves, what is the other point that these two curves are intersecting at? And it's going to be 1, 1. So now that we have a sketch of our region of integration here, we want to determine what order of integration can we use to integrate in the most efficient manner. And with this particular example, so in order to determine that, you want to take your pencil and run it over the region so that it, your pencil is parallel to the y-axis to see, does the top curve and the bottom curve always remain the same? And it does. No matter where I place a cross-section for x, we can always see that the top curve is going to be the square root of x and that our bottom curve here is always going to be x cubed. Now, if you run your pencil over this region parallel to the x-axis, you're going to see that the left-hand curve and right-hand curve will always remain the same as well. We would just need to rewrite the functions, solving both of those functions for x. So we'll leave this region as it is and go right ahead and define the bounds using what is given. So we have the y bounds. And again, we're using the top and bottom curves here. So we can say that y is always going to be greater than or equal to x cubed and less than or equal to the square root of x. And our x bounds here are the constants that we find on our x axis. So we know the smallest x value is 0. And then dropping this down, we can see the, the largest x value is 1. So we can say that x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. And using these bounds and our given function here, we are ready to integrate. So if we want to take this one step further, we could say that our region of integration, r, is the set of all ordered pairs x, y, such that y is greater than or equal to x cubed, but less than or equal to the square root of x, and then x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. And so we're ready to set up the integral and evaluate. And this is our double integral. So for this question, again, we were given the double integral over the region r of 4xy minus y cubed dA. And so now we're plugging in the bounds that we just found from our sketch. So this becomes our outer integral, again, is the constant bounds that's from 0 to 1. The inner bounds are the bounds on y, x cubed, to the square root of x. The function itself remains as it is, 4xy minus y cubed, and we're using the order dy dx. And so we're ready to start evaluating here. And we begin by evaluating our inner integral. So 
basically evaluate the inner integral. So I have the integral from x cubed to the square root of x of 4xy minus y cubed dy. So holding x fixed here, we end up with 2xy squared minus y to the fourth all over 4 from x cubed to the square root of x. And so it's safe to evaluate. So this becomes, we have 2x multiplied by the square root of x squared minus the square root of x to the fourth over 4 minus 2x multiplied by x cubed squared minus x cubed to the fourth by 4. And so we know here that the x squared squared, or the square root of x squared simply becomes x. So this is 2x squared minus x squared by 4 minus, and looking here we know that x cubed squared, so we're multiplying those exponents here to give us x to the 6th. So x to the 6th times x leaves us with 2x to the 7th minus x to the 12th by 4, and we want to simplify. So I have 2x squared, actually we can get a common denominator here. So if we multiply, we think about 2x squared as being 2x squared by 1, we can now multiply the numerator and denominator by 4 to get that common denominator. And so combining those up, we end up with 8x squared minus x squared for a 7x squared by 4. And then distributing this negative through this will be minus 2x to the 7th plus x to the 12th over 4. And so this is our final answer here. Alternatively, we could also factor out this constant 1 fourth into the front, or to the front, which leaves us with 1 fourth times 7x squared minus 8x to the 7th plus x to the 12th. So this forms, again, these are both equivalent, but we'll take a peek and see which one's going to be easier to use in our final answer, or in our outer integral which is what we want to do now. We want to evaluate the outer integral. So the outer integral had the bounds 0 to 1. And I'm going to use my factored version here, this 1 fourth times 7x squared minus 8x to the 7th plus x to the 12th dx. And so we have 1 fourth multiplied by, so we're just using our power rule here for our, the power rule of our anti-differentiation rules. So this will be 7x cubed over 3 minus 8x to the 8th over 8, which we'll simplify, plus x to the 13th over 13. So these 8's cancel, and don't forget we have bounds from 0 to 1. So plugging our bounds in here, we keep 1 fourth on the outside. So plugging in 1 first, we're going to have 7 thirds minus 1 plus 1 thirteenth minus, and then when we plug in 0 here, everything disappears, leaving us with 0. All right, so we need to find a common denominator here. And let's just rewrite this one more time, giving ourselves a little bit more room. So I have 7 thirds minus, I think about that as 1 by 1, plus 1 over 13. So our least common denominator here is going to be 3 times 13, which equals 39. So we need to multiply 7 thirds numerator and denominator by 13. We'll multiply 1 numerator and denominator by 39, and then 1 over 13, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. 
And so this leaves us with, we have 1 fourth multiplied by 13 times 7 gives us 91 minus 39 plus 3 all over 39. So in the numerator here, we have 91 minus 39 plus 3 to give us 55. And the denominator, we have 39 times 4 for 156. And so this is our beautiful final answer.